after a three-day break from the beaches in Matera, are on the way to Lecce. Florence of the South. Uh, not too much city exploration expected. We got about eight or nine days of hopefully nothing but beach. Similar to Gargano. Florence of the South. And we'll check out the city, of course. Well, we're not in Lecce yet. We're in uh, Toronto province, in Puglia. And the landlady told us there were flamingos on this salt lake here. But I don't see any. I take some more steps. Our next stop is in Lecce. It's an abandoned town, a ghost town that was built during fascist era Italy in the early 1930s, Mantarugia. It was built around a farm by the same name. And after World War II, when the farms became privatized, the village slowly started emptying out. By the 1980s, it was completely abandoned and became the ghost town it is today. The abandoned speed limit sign, another abandoned fascist sign, fascist era. This town used to hold around 800 people. By the time it was completely abandoned in the 1980s, it became a place of interest for satanic cults. And in this deconsecrated church behind me, uh, a lot of dark rituals took place. Are you nervous? Yeah. So no armed guards yet. Just lots of signs about fierce dogs roaming the area. I would say this town looks pretty abandoned. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get into this fascist era church. Look at that. Doors open for us. Wow. Come on. Don't be afraid. Jackpot. <laughs> Professional. Here's where the holy water once sat. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say this one is still in use. Bianca is roaming the fields right now, stealing uh, plums. She tried to steal pears, but that's not going to be in season yet for another couple months. The grapes are still green, so plums, it's their last hope. Huh? 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 Oh, what do we got here? Look at that. Yeah. Look at you. Whoa. Got some plums. Some pretty good. I'm gonna go for seconds. You didn't come from Romania for nothing. Should I get more? I don't know how many plums you think I'm gonna eat, but okay, maybe. this should do it. Welcome to our village of Villa Convento. What a pleasant village. So we're in Salento now. We're gonna stay here for nine days. Salento is the heel of Italy's boot. 
It's a sub-peninsula on the peninsula that is Italy. And it's in Puglia, one of 20 regions that make up Italy. We're gonna focus on the Lecce area of Salento. Lecce makes up most of Salento, actually. So we're in Marina Sera, and this is Piscina Naturale di Marina Sera, which means natural swimming pool. The sea is spilling out into the remains of an ancient quarry, and it's surrounded by coves, so perfectly turquoise, calm water, and uh, maybe we'll spend more time here than we thought we would. What do you think about that? Sounds good. Yeah. And now you know what a natural swimming pool looks like. like every ancient seaside town that had a rocky coast should have carved swimming pools into them. They should do it now. Perfection. So we spent two hours at those natural swimming pools. It is 4.30. I think we have enough time for another beach. Beach number nine, Il Cholo. So here it is, Il Cholo. What am I, 40, 50 meters above the beach here? Well, this is a nice color. The first two beaches we've seen in Salento. Pretty memorable, very unique. Something nice going on in this region. You're not going to come in? Yo, Cholo, I'd go back to it, but like the natural swimming pools, no real place outside of the water to be comfortable. It's just uh, stone slabs, or in the case of Il Cholo, it looked like a sloping uh, concrete ramp. Now heading back up north, past the natural swimming pools, to Tricase Porto. It's supposed to be one of the most beautiful beaches down here in Lo Salento. Beach number 10. Are we overdoing it? Is, it? is it too much for one day? It's okay. It's FOMO, you know, we only have nine days and so many beaches. Again, it's a, uh, it's a concrete beach. Ah, but you got a little patch of sand here at the end. You coming in with me on this one? No. <laughs> Why not? Because I want to get the sand. That's it for today, children. In case we're keeping score, our favorite beach for today 
But what's your favorite beach for today? The first one. The quarry. The, the quarry, the natural swimming pool. Yeah, that was mine too. Okay, so that was our favorite beach for today. The uh, My favorite beach though, since this Puglia beach crawl began, was on the second day that Fjord Beach that we had a hike down to, where we were all alone. And it was, uh, oh, it, there was one jellyfish. I didn't want to tell you, but yeah, there was a jellyfish there, but it didn't bother us. Look what we got. Pasticciotto. It's dessert, local dessert. Yes. Oh man, perfect. And puce, it's stuffed with olives. Mmm, that's like olive bread. I forget what this was called, but it looks like a looks like a mini pizza. It tastes like a mini pizza. We're in the village of Maritima about a 50 minute drive from our base near Lecce and heading to beach number 11. You ever see these glasses? These are uh, slap seas, great for the beach and for when the day turns into night because you just, uh... pretty cool. Nice bike. This is Cala del Acqua Viva, Water of Life. It's a cold water bay. It kind of reminds me of the one in uh, Kayakwe in Turkey. It's got uh, freshwater springs pouring into it, so keeps the uh, keeps the water temperature cool. Where then we go? About nine minutes from the beach is our next stop, Porto Vecchio in Castro. And it looks like they got a little castle up there. This is the Tower Minervino, if I'm saying that right. And we're headed to the easternmost point of Italy. That tower was built in the 1500s during Spanish rule. So, uh, you want to see the easternmost point of Italy? I do. Oh, you do? I do. I wasn't talking to you. Oh. I'm talking to all those people. Okay. I'll take you to. There you have it, the easternmost point of Italy, that lighthouse. We got close enough. And now to Otranto. I lied. Uh, we're going to go to a bauxite hole filled with water first, then Otranto. What kind of soil is this, Beloga? My favorite. Your favorite kind of soil. Yeah. She does love her red soil, doesn't she? Bauxite is where the world gets most of its aluminum from. And here's what an extraction site looks like after it gets filled in with water. Green, green pines. In July 1480, 128 Ottoman ships landed on the shores of this city, Otranto, as part of the first plan of attack to take over Italy. 15-day siege, and uh, they lay waste to everything. They killed and burned 
everything they came across. They got to the cathedral and a bunch of Christians were huddled there, hiding in the crypt. The Ottomans gave the Christians a chance to convert to Islam. And of course, all of them said, no, we could never be Muslim. The archbishop was beheaded on the spot, on the altar, and the accompanying clergymen were sawn in half. The rest of the Christians were taken prisoner. The women and uh, able-bodied children were sold into slavery, and men and babies were killed. Uh, they say that none of them converted to Islam. They all died martyrs. 813 of them were killed. And in this church, you can see their remains, these skull and bones. Pope Benedict, that Pope who couldn't even turn the dried blood of San Gennaro into liquid in Napoli, he made all 813 of them saints. Look at all these animals on the floor. Mosaic. Face of a man, body of a beast. Original on the right, new on the left. Nice organ. And here's the Ashwari Chapel. All skull and bones behind the altar here. This is what a gourmet octopus sandwich could look like. I'm gonna miss octopus when we're back in Serbia and Romania. Salento babushka. Happy with all your pastas and wines and so we're looking for pasticciotto for dessert same thing we ate yesterday can't get enough of it okay destroy it I start with this one. pasticciotto ricotta and pistachio This is Rustico, a local pastry, popular in Lecce. Flaky. Okay, not just flaky. Once you get to the middle, there's uh, there's like a sauce and some tomato sauce. It tastes like a calzone in a way, a creamy calzone. That makes sense. As you drive around Salento, you see a lot of these old stone structures. These were. Uh, as temporary shelter for farmers. Uh, it's dry stone wall. The stones would come out of the ground as the farmers tilled the land. They would also use these stones to outline their property with a stone wall. They're called pagliata and they're very old. Most of the ones we see while driving around, they estimate were built from around 1000 AD. But they say uh, some structures and origins could be as far back as 2000 BC.
Remember that story I was telling you? All the way from yesterday. The 128 Ottoman ships that landed on the shores of Otranto. It was here at beach number 12, Baya de Turki, Bay of the Turks. Lecce has its own iced coffee, traditional to Puglia. Cafe Leccese. It's uh, iced coffee with homemade almond milk. Pasta in a jar by Ben. This is Baia di Torre Sant'Andrea. A donkey is a pig's best friend. Look, someone's licking me. Angel. According to the weather report, wind is coming from the north at 15 miles per hour today. It was getting a little windy up there by the Adriatic Sea yesterday, so instead of going back to that north and east side of Salento, you know, Salento, that little peninsula, is such a great location that no matter which direction the wind comes from, there's a beach that's just perfect. We're going to head to the Ionian Sea, a beach called Punta Prosciutto. Calm as a lake. been in Lecce this whole time, but haven't been to this city of Lecce, a city that has the nickname the Florence of the South. Now, I've been there a few times. I don't quite see it, but there is a lot of Baroque. And we'll head out there now to dinner. And arrived Lecce. And here's one of a few gates into the old town from the 1700s. What a beautiful ficus tree. And here's some Baroque in Piazza Tancredi. It's the Church of St. Mary of the Carmel. Ruined pipes. Nice columns. Doric columns. Look, it's not Banksy.
Church of St. Irene, consecrated 1639. Silver Oak. Another Café Le In the middle of town, a partially excavated Roman amphitheater from the second century AD. Almost 2,000 years old. And here's the Baroque Church of St. Clair. You wouldn't know it because I didn't film it, but uh, quite a few Nigerian and Romanian hookers in this city, uh, victims of human trafficking yeah. and run by organized crime. You know what they eat a lot of out here? Horse. They eat horse meat. We're going to hopefully have some horse meat tonight. Well, you're not. What do you dream of? Uh, some tacos. She wants tacos. There's a Mexican restaurant here, too. The word for horse appears to be cavallo. Cicerietria. It's a typical plate of Salento. Oh, okay. It's made with uh, uh, pasta boiling and uh, frying and uh, chick beans. And this horse. is horse meat. Uh, yeah. It's a slow cooked uh, in the sauce tomato for five, six hours maybe. Grazie. It's a uh, typical of a uh, lecce. Enjoy. It's it's sweet and gamey. It's beefy. It's venison. -y. It's horse. So this was a vegetarian dish and uh, and made intentionally to kind of feel a little meaty. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Time for a post-horse Baroque Basilica. The Basilica di Santa Croce, from the 1600s. They charge money to get in, so I think I'll go back tomorrow. It'll be brighter inside. It's a mass guard. Santo Pasticciotto. <laughs> Lecce city gate, the gate of Napoli from the 1500s. No beach today. Lecce again today. The entire city is built with this Lecce stone, this soft local limestone. This is the Church of St. Matthew from the 1600s. So that's St. Agatha being tortured back there. Padre Pio. That's quite an altar. And here's the Virgin breastfeeding her child. Uh, breast again located in a very strange position. Looks strange with teeth actually. None of the other ones have teeth. I think I found the only, the only statue with teeth. It just seemed creepy for some reason. And this is the Lecce Cathedral, founded 1144 and completed 1689. 
dedicated to uh, St. Mary of the Assumption. First, no photos or videos were allowed in here, so you're welcome. Nice Baroque Duomo. I think a good way to know if you're looking at Baroque is if the camera has no idea what to focus on, and neither do your eyes. It's just over the top, too much, more than enough. We passed by this church yesterday, uh, St. Mary of the Carmel, and it looks like there's going to be a procession of a saint. Look at this, sweet tarali, lemon. It's not all Baroque in Lecce. Here are some Moorish villas. in front of the castle of Charles V. This castle was built in the Middle Ages, but it was strengthened by Charles V in 1539. So the reason we're back in Lecce is because I bought a ticket to see four old Baroque churches and only got to see one of them. This is the Basilica di Santa Croce. This is the last Baroque church on that ticket. Holy Cross. The word for horse is cavallo. Doing it again. Hey, Beloga, as a vegetarian, what did you order for your appetizer? I didn't expect it, the focaccia with potatoes to have meat. Is that meat? Yeah, I didn't know that it will have meat. Fried horse meatball. And here is eggplant stuffed with horse meat. For today's breakfast, a wine picnic. Hello. So, of course, we have here some chardonnay, one of my favorite Italian snacks. Some uh, some pepper and olives, olive oil, some pesto, some pucci. Yeah, the, the thing about the thing about Pucci is uh, you know they have olives in there and sometimes actually almost all the time <laughs> there's bits yeah I want to know how this started it's like hey uh, Vito we got this bread we're gonna put olives in it and Vinny's like hey Vito what about the what about all the pits in the olives and they're like fuck them fuck the customers let them break their teeth is that what happened Uh, you ever want to hear uh, expressions in Salentina? Uh, our new best friend, Chiara, she can help you with that. There she hey is. Hey there, it's Chiara here <laughs> for some nasty stuff in uh, Salentino. Oh, nasty stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have manculicani. It literally translates in never the dogs. That means that not even the dogs would do that. We have maipeyabu. It's like, ugh, ish. 
And then we have Limuartitoi, that's really bad, don't use that with anyone. And that's for like, damn your dead parents, yeah, or relatives, better, yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first, well done, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Now for Puglia Beach Crawl Beach number 15, Spiaggia di Torre Lapilo. So now I become Italian. I'm told this is pretty much it. What? I beat Ed mercilessly. Yeah, uh huh, that's good. Back in Lecce, the city, again, uh, for a, a dinner sandwich. Puccio. That's a restaurant opened in 1941. <laughs> Three generations. Grandpa, father. There is a Pugliese Pucci. There it goes. It's leaking. This is Palazzo Merese. Palazzo Merese. Wrap it up with the gelato. Yeah. There you go. Chocolate and berry. Spicy chocolate. Today's our last day in Lecce. Not Salento, but Lecce. And we're heading to beach number 16, Porto Gesario. You know, the beaches on the Ionian Sea side of Salento, uh, so far have all been sand. Expecting the same for this beach today. On the Adriatic side, it was all rock. The wind's coming from the north as well, so it also makes sense to go to the Ionian Sea today. The beach is very small, and uh, there are too many children for my liking. But the water is clear, water is calm. We'll stay for the day. <laughs> What's so funny? Said there's no losers in southern Italy, but I think I found one. It's this guy. We played up to three, and I got five points. He got one. That that's pretty much a loser. When you reach the level of backgammon that I've reached, it's really important to let your opponents, especially ones that play you regularly, win once in a while. Otherwise, they don't play you anymore. Then why did I win for the last 20 times? Ever since we entered our beach vacation, do you think that's a coincidence? I want you happy so I can enjoy life. Now that the beach part of Puglia Beach Crawl Chapter 2 is completed, I'll give you my top five in no particular order. Uh, certainly, the Fjord Beach in Gargano from Chapter 1, that makes the top five. Um, yesterday's beach, Spiaggia di Torre La Pilo, and the day before, Punta Prosciutto. Crystal clear, turquoise water, super calm, it was like the Caribbean. I would put the, uh, the natural swimming pools of Marina Serra on the list, but it was too shallow. You couldn't swim. You really could only stand. Uh, it wasn't, but it was a super unique feature. Really nice to see. Uh, so the last one, I would say... Uh, 
Oh no, I have two more. Uh, let's say Il Cholo, the one with the 30 meter bridge above it. That was pretty cool. And for the last one, uh, Cala del Aqua Viva, the, the water of life, the one with the fresh springs in it, was also perfect. I think I named five, maybe six, I don't know. Those are the best ones so far. We're in a neighboring village from our village of Villa Convento, Novoli, waiting for our laundry to be done. You want to see Novoli's main square, Piazza Regina Margherita? Great haircut. What a great Sunday so far. Only 6.5 euros for a load. Bustillo. Another neighboring village to our beloved Villa Convento. This one's called Carmiano. Let's see what's going on in Carmiano on a Sunday. <laughs> I love when the Academy disappears and you can see what used to be underneath. Here's some exciting news. If I'm reading this poster here behind me correctly, in honor of um, the Madonna of Carmine, there's a Poo tribute band tonight at 10 o'clock. That's in 20 minutes. Here. In Carmiano. That's it. There's my porchetta. It's all mine. A little bigger than a pizza, a little smaller than a pizza. province for the first time since we got here heading to Brindisi province still in Salento high Salento Alto Salento a town called Celia Mesapica for lunch look at that our first truly sighting and here it is the main square of Celia Mesapica there's supposed to be some food around here I am hungry Castello Ducale. It's Monday. It appears that this town, like many towns in southern Italy, not too lunch friendly on Mondays. The sound of cicadas even in the center of town. Love it. Hope this one's open. Each table is set up with tomatoes and bread and uh, tarali. Ricotta forte, that's ricotta cheese. This is super forte. It almost burns, it almost burns your mouth. Yeah, yeah, talk, talk. Okay, this one is for you. This is the salami and ham and they are all from the, from the farm. The cheese for you, ma'am, but you don't eat, I don't eat that. And this is uh, onions, this is uh, artichoke, homemade product with vinaigrette, zucchini, sweet sour, ricotta, and uh, mozzarella, and this is a small omelette. Okay. You can eat all from here. Okay? Grazie. Grazie. Baba bean puree and chicory. And here are fried meatballs. Pobetta. So, the waiter just told us that this is where Salento ends. When we continue on to Martina Branca, 
We are no longer in Salento. I'm gonna still show you Martina Franca. I'm gonna include it in this video, but it is no longer Salento. This is it. This is our farewell meal to Salento. The digestive, uh, limoncello, and uh, a bitter of herbs. It's a little... This is a monument to the town's citizens who fell for the country. This town was the military capital of the Misapi. The Misapians were a tribe that inhabited Salento in classical antiquity. Google it for more. Square's clock tower again. And goodbye, Chalia Mesapica. You're truly. What is truly? What's a trulo? Let's take a closer look. So this conical pile of stone held together without mortar, behind me is a trulo, singular form of truly. And I'm not gonna talk about it till chapter three, the Bari chapter. How's that for incentive? Watch chapter three. And welcome to Martina Franca. Some would say we have just left Salento. We're in Toronto province now. Did I tell you I've confirmed the official boundaries of Salento? Yeah, we're about, uh, we're about 20 minutes outside of Salento. When we go to Ostuni tomorrow for lunch, we'll be back on Salento. So we are in, uh, we are in Itria Valley right now. <laughs> every, every door. Love the door frames in this city. the Basilica di San Martino. Rococo style. If you're only gonna be having one meal here in Martina Franca, which is the case, sadly, for me, um, I think you make it a Capicola di Martina Franca. It's a product they're all very proud of here. Grazie. The opera festival begins tomorrow. The aim of the festival is to present obscure and neglected works of opera.
I see laundry and I just can't help myself. Please God, make it stop. I love a pink door. Lest you think Martina Franca is all old whitewashed buildings, think again. What? What is it? Farmer's Net. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, you're, you're pretty happy here. You love it. You love it. Heading back into Salento for lunch, a town called Ostuni. Its nickname is the White City. Ostuni was a walled city, as you can see. This is a 1771 column of Oranzo, the patron saint of Ostuni. That's uh, capacolo, cacio cavallo cheese, and artichokes. Back in the day, they believed the color white was a disinfectant, a protector from plagues. Ostuni is known for its considerably sized population of British and German expats. When I was here in November with my mother, the population was about 32,000 people. And now, in July, it's over 100,000. Here's the Cathedral of Ostuni. They say the archbishop responsible for building this church is sculpted kneeling in front of the Virgin Mary here. So this church was built 1228, 1229 in Romanesque style and uh, damaged in an earthquake and then rebuilt in Gothic style in the 1400s. The fresco on the ceiling was completed in 1720. You ever notice that the churches in Salento seem to be situated in such a way that you can never look at them head on? Here's a true low house for sale. Should we buy it? It's only 35,000 euros. Here's another Trullo for sale. Only 90,000 euros. And now you know how it got white. That is the end of Puglia Beach Crawl Chapter 2, Salento. We're headed now to Bari Province and we'll be there for about a month. That's Chapter 3. What incentive? Oh, the suspense. What a cliffhanger. Mm. <laughs>